Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Team Leader Y. And so I've been using the Google Pixel 7 for a month now and I just want to share with you guys some of my thoughts on the smartphone. Let's get started. Now the Pixel 7 is of course Google's latest smartphone and it takes over for the Pixel 6 series from last year, bringing along some considerable improvements. Now after some time of using it, I just want to share some of the things that I really love about this smartphone as well as some of the downsides of owning a Pixel 7. Maybe you're thinking of getting one and hopefully this content will be useful for you. Now if you guys want to check out this phone, I will drop some links in the description below as well as links to our other videos here on Team Gear Y. With that said, let's get started. As always, I do think that one of the best reasons to own a Pixel smartphone is the camera performance. I've had a great time using the cameras on the Pixel 7 for mobile photography. I think it's done a terrific job so far, at least for the kind of usage that I need. I do prefer Google's approach to computational photography. Color in photos is just the right amount and not too saturated like what you'd get on some Samsung phones. And the Pixel 7 does an impressive job with dynamic range and exposure, the latter of which really shines in low light shots. As for the front camera, the new ultrawide lens is a welcome addition and does add a bit more versatility for selfie shots and videos as it allows for more room for subjects to squeeze in. While it doesn't have the same zoom capabilities as the more premium Pixel 7 Pro, the phone is a very ideal smartphone for point and shoot scenarios in general. One thing that the Pixel 7 does improve is the biometric hardware setup inside the phone. Like the Pixel 6, it features an in-display fingerprint sensor, although this time around we do get face unlock as well. In comparison to the Pixel 6, the fingerprint scanner on the 7 has improved, at least based on my time using it. It's more responsive and accurate, and I haven't had much trouble using it except in situations where my finger was sometimes too dry or a bit too wet. While it's not as fast as the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that you get on Samsung or OnePlus phones, it's a general improvement when compared to the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro fingerprint scanner. As for the face unlock feature, it's been perfectly fine for me, it works nicely, and I'd even go as far to say that it's considerably faster than the fingerprint scanner. Of course, your ambient lighting condition will play a part with the face unlock. In general though, I've had a better experience with the biometrics on the Pixel 7. Another element to the Pixel 7 which has been improved is the design and handling of the phone. While it does come with a slightly smaller 6.3 inch display, it's a lighter device overall and a lot easier to handle compared to the Pixel 6. The camera bar's redesign is also a nice change as the aluminum frame does offer a bit more durability compared to the glass window on the Pixel 6. With that said though, I do feel a lot safer using a case on my phone and if you feel the same way, then you might want to check out these cases from Spigen for the Pixel 7 which we reviewed earlier on here in the channel. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check them out. Now in terms of performance, the Pixel 7 in general is a fast device. The 90Hz display combined with 8GB of RAM makes for a really smooth user experience and navigating the UI does feel fluid with zero lags and stutters. Android 13 also has been a more polished experience compared to Android 12 on last year's Pixels and a lot of the bugs that were present on those phones have been fixed this year. On the other hand, the Tensor G2 isn't a significant performance upgrade over the first gen Tensor chip. Yes, you'll be able to play a lot of graphics intensive games as you would on the Pixel 6, but there's little in the way of massive performance upgrades and users expecting something similar to what we got between the Snapdragon 888 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 might be a little bit disappointed. Additionally, battery life has been a consistent experience for me and I didn't experience any severe battery drain. I do charge more frequently though if I'm using the Pixel outdoors, especially with with frequent camera use, data, GPS, and a high screen brightness. Overall though, I think that the Pixel 7 offers a user experience that outshines the Pixel 6 in terms of stability and general everyday use. Alright, so with that said, as much as I enjoy using the Pixel 7, there are some issues which I've noticed. For one, there are times when the camera app tends to lag. I'm not exactly sure what causes it, but it's happened to me on a couple of occasions. A reset seems to have fixed the issue and apart from the two times that has happened to me, it hasn't occurred again so far. The phone also tends to get rather warm, especially during data use in gaming. Now you're not going to notice this if you use a case on your phone, but if you ever take it off, it's more obvious. Thankfully though, it doesn't heat up as much as the Pixel 6 used to and doesn't get uncomfortably hot as well, although I've experienced less heating with other phones like the iPhone 14 for example. I do hope that Google takes notice of these bugs and addresses them in a future update. In closing, I do think that the Pixel 7 does offer some much welcome upgrades over the Pixel 6, and factors like the camera, biometrics, and overall performance have been really satisfying in general. 
The fact that the price tag remains the same as last year is also a great addition. And if you're looking to upgrade from a much older Pixel or a more basic device, then the Pixel 7 is a nice consideration. With that said, I do hope that the issues I mentioned are addressed through software updates, and these are things to take into consideration, especially for discerning buyers. Overall, I've had a fully functional experience with the Pixel 7, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this phone improves with software updates and feature drops in the coming months. Alright guys, so that does it for this video. If you like this, feel free to check out our other content here on TeamViewerY. And of course, let me know your thoughts on the Pixel 7 in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.